world. Welcome to New Day Christian Center. We love you. We're glad you're joining us today. Got a couple of things we want to pray with all over the world. First of all, we want to welcome uh, Brother Terry uh, Munsey from uh, Uganda, uh, East, is that East Africa or South Africa? East. East. Uganda, uh, East. East Africa. He's watching our, our uh, ministry videos. And uh, folks, we're, we're reaching in, into Africa. They're watching us there. Amen. Not God. only there, but he has a beautiful ministry of music. And he's a guitar player, and he also is a minister of, of children. And uh, he says that his children's music class all sit and watch our videos, and then they practice music and worship God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? So, Brother Terry, God bless you. Very much. Say, we love you. We love, love you. you. Brother Terry. Brother Terry. From Uganda. From Uganda. East Africa. East Africa. Hey, Amen. Doesn't that sound great? Amen. Amen. And then we have another specific prayer request from our covering and our dear brother, uh, Justin Morris in uh, Washington, the president and director of Pentecostal Evangelical Church. Uh, spoke with him on the phone last night. Uh, share some things on our in, on our hearts and the spirit, and uh, try to get the computer to work. And uh, he asked, he said, Pastor TC, would you please remember to pray for me? I've got to take my CDL license test. And uh, I guess that's to drive trucks and buses and all manner of larger vehicles and limousines. And the uh, side job that he has requires that he has a CDL license, and it's got to stay renewed. So it's very important for him to pass this test. And uh, now, naturally, I could pass it and not have to study. <laughs> but uh, uh, he, needs, he needs to study and he needs prayer. <laughs> Somebody say, forgive Pastor T.C. Forgive Pastor T.C. So we, love, we love you, Brother Justin, and everybody stretch your hands out here together right now. Now, Father, we thank you for the joy of the Lord. We thank you that we can laugh with praise and joy yes. in your sanctuary. But right now, with sincerity of heart, with intentional release of faith, Father, we ask you to anoint your man of God, your servant Justin. Anoint him with the mind of Christ. Give him supernatural recall, supernatural understanding, supernatural ability to pass this test in every stage with, a, with excellence in scores. In Jesus' name. And we bind every spirit of confusion. We bind every spirit that would try to interfere, hinder, resist his, 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 his achievement. You're bound in Jesus' name. And Father God, we give you praise in advance of the great report we will receive. For Brother Justin's behalf, in Jesus' name. And the people of God said... Amen. 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 Well, I forgot my notes. That could be good. That could be bad. Amen. <laughs> you have your Bibles? Amen. Pastor, Pastor Darrell's been an uh, associate minister with, with me for over 20 years. He knows this might go either way. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's right. It's going to be the Holy Ghost either way. Amen. 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 So open your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 14 as we continue this great teaching on demons, devils, the origin of sin, and the origin of evil. Amen? Amen. Have you been learning something so far? Amen. Amen. You get a lot of feedback, a lot of praise reports from people talking about how much they've learned and how much insight they have received from the, just the beginning of these teachings. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> now I'm going to have to move fast to cover the ground that I do want to cover, and there's just such a, well, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just come to you again right now, and I surrender myself, I surrender my voice, I surrender my heart, I surrender my mind to you, Holy Spirit. You are the mind of Christ. You are the will of God. You are the understanding and the insight and the, 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 the wisdom of God. Move and dwell and have your being in me. Speak through me. And we will bow our hearts and have ears to hear, hearts to receive, and by your touch and by your grace, spirits to understand, receive, and keep in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 
There's a real urgency. I mean, folks, there's wars, rumors of wars, upheavals of nature, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting all, all over the world. Every Matthew 24 sign that Jesus said to look for is happening in mega manifestations all around us, all over the globe, right? Jesus is at the door. Our time is short. And the Lord quickened this, this word to me. Labor now because the day approaches when night will be here and no man can work. Yes. Amen. You know, that hit me like a sledgehammer in my heart. Do you understand that we're on the brink of them passing laws for sin? That's also scripture. Yeah. They're, they're, they're waging legislation to make it to where men and women of God can no longer work in the darkness they're trying to spread. We are in that, we're manifesting that scripture right now. The night's approaching upon us. But the good news is this. The dawn of Jesus' second coming is at hand. Amen. 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 When darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness the people. Arise and shine, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Amen? Amen. I said arise and shine. The darker it looks, the greater the grace for you to rise up and you to shine forth with the glory and the power and the majesty of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is your greatest hour. But listen to me. It is our hour, not our generation anymore, not our season anymore. It is our hour to labor and shine for Jesus. We're virtually out of time. Every day is a day of grace. Every day is a day that God's holding back the return of our Lord and Savior for that one more soul. Amen? Say it with me. Maranatha. Maranatha. Yet one more soul. One more time. Maranatha, yet one more soul. What's Maranatha means? Come, Lord Jesus, but give us one more soul before you do. Amen? Amen. That's my cry as a man of God. That's my cry as a son of God. That's my cry as a pastor of this church. The signs are here. The night is coming when we won't be able to work anymore for God's glory. And I do want you to come, Jesus, and I want you to come soon, but give me one more soul. I live every day for one more soul. Amen? Amen? I pray to God that you make that your cry, your prayer, your plea, your focus between now and the second coming of our Lord. Amen? Amen. So let's dig into this. If there's ever a need when we will be surrounded with more demonic activity. As a matter of fact, I think somebody got killed in our neighborhood just before we came to church. I'm serious, folks. We live in a nice neighborhood. I'm Load the car and get ready for church. I hear, boom! I said, well, there's construction going on, and sometimes you can drop a board and it sounds like a gun. But that was deep, and that didn't sound right to my 20 years of police work here. Then I heard, boom! From another section of the neighborhood. I knew that was a shotgun. Same sound, then just a little bit further down the road. Boom! Boom! Said, what is going on? So I called the police. And I said, there's gunshots. Somebody going through the neighborhood started over at the intersection or moving their way down the highway shooting a shotgun. And she goes, uh, okay, do you, do you want the police officers to contact you? I, know. I said, no, but listen, I am a former police officer and I know a gunshot when I hear it, tell the officers to be, be careful. So about five minutes, well, three minutes later, another shotgun blast. Then about two minutes after that, we heard bang, 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 bang. Guess who that was? Then we heard another shotgun blast and more small handgun fire. So the cops got there, I think they killed him. Because there was a gunfight just before we came to church. Now folks, that's never happened since I've lived in Texas. The darkness is encroaching. It was almost like this demonized person was trying to work their way around to come into our neighborhood, but he couldn't do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. They're going to, the, the darkness is encroaching upon the world. Gross darkness is going to come to the earth. And manifestations of evil that you never thought possible are going to be at your door whether you want it or not. Now we could deny that with a warm and sensitive and secret sensitive uh, message and mentality and posture. But when you go home, you better be able to stand in the evil day. Amen. You better be able to know who you are in Christ and do 
effective, powerful spiritual warfare. Amen. You better know your enemy and how to deal with him. If there's any time that we need to know how to deal with demons, devils, and the demonic, and the, and the, and the demonic energized, it's now. The time of luxury, well, we'd rather hear that, we'd rather preach that, and we'd rather study, that's over. The battle's at our front door, whether you want to accept that or not. And you better be ready for the fight. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Now look at somebody and say, I am victorious. I am victorious. In every area. Amen. And in every way. Amen. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Amen. And if, you, if you don't know that, you'll never effectively fight. Amen. You can have the best weapons and the best equipment and the best instructions with that equipment but without a heart to fight and the revelation that how effective it will work and you can work it, you'll still die in battle. Amen. So you've got to know I am in Christ and I am the victor. Amen. I am victorious. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. And I'm ready to demonstrate that with authority and take dominion. Amen. Amen. I'm ready and able to demonstrate that by taking authority and dominion. Amen. 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 We need to be equipped and seriously ready, able, and willing to enter the fight. Amen. Have you ever thought that when Jesus said, go ye in all the world, he was telling the disciples, go out and start fights? We're going to look at that today. Uh, in this area that I want to concentrate today on on. Demons and devils are territorial. Yeah. They're territorial by nature. Amen? Amen? And I believe that's why the Holy Spirit led us in intercession is to take, take dominion over the strong man in our households. Amen? Amen? You can't afford for somebody to be sitting in authority over your houses. Amen. Just because something happens, hasn't happened yet, you're leaving it up to his whim on when and how rather than just taking him out. I don't want to wait for the adversary to see if he's going to decide to strike me. I want to make sure he's not around to strike me. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now, the only way you can do that is approach him first and start the fight. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, you, you understand he was sending them out into regions and territories long held by false gods to challenge them and bring them down. He was saying, go start a fight and win it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'll tell you something else. That's exactly, everything God's kingdom works, just mirror it in the opposite. That's how the kingdom of darkness works. Amen. God has a rank structure. Satan has a rank structure. God's got uh, soldier angels. Satan has soldier demons. Amen. God has a plan and a procedure he expects his army to work by. Satan has plans and procedures, and that's how his army works. Amen? Amen. Amen. And exactly like Jesus, go ye in all the land and preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick and what? Here's how you know he said, go out and start fights. Cast out devils. From where? Where they're existing right now. You go to where they're at, and you challenge them, override them, and get them out. Amen. Amen. You start it. Amen. This peaceful coexistence, happy, loosey-goosey, Christianity is a, is a reproach to the commission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who has been made to back up in these last 10 years? The church. The church. Amen. Why? Because we lost our purpose. We wanted to coexist and put it on our bumpers, not win the kingdom for God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you're not making somebody happy, what is it, sad, mad, or glad? Yes. Your existence is nothing. Amen. Do you realize you should get to a point where you're so spiritual, spiritually energized and empowered with the Holy Spirit that when you walk in a room, you make people nervous? Amen. Well, I thought we were supposed to bring peace. You bring peace to those that have a heart to hear. And you agitate everybody that's anti-Christ in their nature. Amen. Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. There is no middle ground. I don't know what happened to the church. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. 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 So you got to know that I am victorious in Christ Jesus. Yes. There's no doubt about that. There can be no doubt about that to do effective warfare. Amen. I am sent of God. I'm empowered by God's commission. I'm empowered by the presence and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. None. No Amen. time at any time. Amen. These are going to be, come, become realities to you. Or the best teaching and the best equipment will be ineffective for your survival. Amen. You, have, you have to have the heart of the army of God. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. You have to have a heart to be in the army of God. You've got to have a heart for it. Amen. We're going to look at that here real quick. Are you ready? Now look at this. We're going to start. Oh, where do you want to start, Holy Spirit? Hang on just a second. Let's start right here. Isaiah chapter 14. Let's look at verse 13. Now we're, I told you we're going to go in and out of Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until we have drawn every golden nugget of revelation and understanding out of these chapters and out of these other areas of the Bible about Satan, the origin of e evil, demons, devils, and spiritual warfare. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 That sounded pathetic. Amen. 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 It sounded Baptist. Amen. Amen. That almost sounded Pentecostal. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. For thou hast said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Remember we're talking about he was cast out of heaven. And he had a throne someplace. In other words, he sat on a throne in a specific spot. He had a territory. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also uh, upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now look at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ to the church. Hallelujah. We're going to look at this real quick here. Now look at what Jesus says. Now how many of you know that these seven churches that Jesus addresses were all located in the, in the region of Asia Minor. Over Almost all of them were right around Turkey. Amen. Pergamos, Smyrna, Smyrna uh, uh, Laodicea, they're all, all that region, look on the map, it's all right around Turkey. Amen? Amen? What's that mean? There's some kind of spiritual focus in that area. Amen? Amen. Say, demons are territorial. Demons are territorial. Now watch this. Revelations chapter 2, verse 12. He's talking to the church of Pergamos. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos, write, These same things saith uh, he which has the Sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, where thou dwellest, where your church is at and where you live. Amen. Even where Satan's seat is at. Now look at me. That just said as plain as day that this is exactly where Satan, in this one geographical spot, is exactly, that's, that's what the Lord said, not me. I'm not even guessing. He's telling us. That's where Satan's throne was at. You want to know where he, where he's set on earth? That's it, right there. We just told you, Pergamum. Still there, by the way. Now, how would you like to serve God in the same city Satan has his throne? You better be walking in dominion. You better be walking in Christ. You can't play church when you're in the same town Satan's ruling. How many of us are looking to move to a well the Grass is greener in that town. There's a better church over there and a better job over there. And God called them to build a church right in Satan's hometown. Right. Amen. And be Christian. Amen. Well, I can't be Christian around here. Nobody around here serving God. They're, they're keeping me down. Evidently, even Satan's throne couldn't stop Jesus from building a church in Satan's town. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that place must have, must Swim in the mnemonic. Amen. 
Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? And we think we got it hard. We think the government's corrupt here. What do you think it's like where his throne sits? Way worse. A million times worse. Yes. Now listen to this. Uh, has a heart, and I know thy works, which, uh, and they were that dwelleth even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name. They didn't even compromise under the shadow of Satan's actual on earth throne. Now, if they can do it, what do you think we could stand in this last hour for Jesus in the U.S.? You better believe we can if we want to. Amen? Amen? Amen. And thou hast not denied my faith, even in the shadow of Satan's throne. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, they killed him for serving God in this town, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now he said it twice. You better believe that's where the tangible personality of Lucifer himself set his throne and dwells. Amen. Amen. And what did God do? Go start a church right there. Amen. Why? Because God knows Satan's territorial. And he's called you to go into his territory and set up God's kingdom. You know, but that's a hard town. That, that town's rough. There's a, there's a lot of sin there. So what? Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he even with the greatest throne in the world. Amen. 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 I think that compared to what we're reading right here, we pale in the ability to stand in the face of evil. Amen. Can I hear a hallelujah? hallelujah. Yes. Listen to this. I, I brought my message. I like to, it, it, it reads great in the Living Bible. Let me see if I can find it really, really fast in the Message Bible. We're just gonna, I'm just going to leave this up here. This is good stuff. You mind if I just teach for a while? To the church in Pergamon. Now listen to this. I see where you live. Right under the shadow of Satan's throne. How would you like to go to that church? Right under the shadow of Satan's throne. But you continued boldly in my name. Hallelujah. We can't even wear a, we can't even wear a Jesus shirt to church for, for uh, to, to work because we might get persecuted. Let me read it again. I see where you live, right under the shadow of Satan's throne. But you continued boldly in my name. You never once denied my name. Even when the pressure was worse, when they martyred Antipas, my witness who stayed faithful to me on Satan's turf. Amen. You know what that means? We should be looking to build build churches where it's absolutely the darkest. Amen. Not looking for where the money's at. Looking for where the sin is at. Amen. Where has he set up his throne the strongest? That's where we need to start a church. Amen. Amen. Most churches are doing what? Moving to the suburbs as the cities get darker. Somebody say amen. 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 The second we start running from the battle, we start losing the battle. Let me say that again. The second you start running from a battle, you set yourself up for losing battles. Amen. Let me say it again. Amen. The second you run from a battle, you now become the loser in future battles. Yes. Amen. Amen. You got to take dominion in Christ Jesus and be victorious in Christ Jesus where you're at. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Who, who, who was, whose throne was in this territory? Satan. Where was the church built? Right there. So what's the answer to spirits being territorial? You take it back. That's what the Great Commission is all about. Now, how many of you know that cities have personalities? Yes. Amen. Amen. Cities, cities, by their very personality and nature, will explain to you what kind of demon sits on the throne of that city. Let's just go down the quick 
the list real quick. Las Vegas. Is there a principality there? Yes. Is there a throne there? Yes. What would what would be the ruling personality of that city? The love of money. And out of that love of money is the root of all the other evils. Prostitution, legalized crime, gambling, drugs. But the principality that sits on the throne over Las Vegas is the love of money. And then all that other stuff springs from the love of money. Amen? How about this one? New York. Well, there's several thrones right there. There's at least three thrones. Three person, but there's going to be one ruling personality. What's the three major manifestations of that demon general sitting over New York? Pride. Huh? Pride. Pride. Well, that, that's going to be down underneath it. But Jezebel. there's one. What is it? Jezebel. Huh? Jezebel. Uh, yeah, but there's still you, the love of power. The love of power. That's where the UN's at. That's the seat of commerce. That, that, what would be another one? Love of self, adornment. That's the garment capital of the world. Amen? Amen. All right, let's, let's try another city. Are you ready? New Orleans. There you go. The ruling principality that sits on the throne of that city is a spirit of witchcraft. Now, there's witchcraft in every other city we're talking about, but the supreme spirit in that city is witchcraft. Amen? Amen? How about this one? Rome. False gods, false religions, idolatry. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, so every city that has a certain thing thriving in it reveals the principality ruling over it. Amen? Amen. So every territory it di directly expresses there's a, there's a principality and dominion there. There's some, somebody sitting on the throne. Doesn't matter who's in the White House or who's in the high rises or who's living in Trump Tower. They're, they're not ruling it. We already looked at that in, in Isaiah 14. He talked to the Prince of Tyre and then he talked to the King of Tyre. Amen? Amen. Every kingdom is the domain of its king. Kingdom. King's domain. Every domain expresses the personality and heart's desire of the king on that throne. How many of you got friends that every time you go in the house there's strife? Who's sitting on a throne in the invisible realm? A demon of what? Strife. How many of you know loving people that never get ahead is just a spirit of confusion all the time in their lives? Who has set up dominion over them? A principality of confusion. So whatever rules in a, in a household, in a city, in a state, comes out from that personality sitting on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, how about this one? Silicon Valley. What is the principality sitting over there? Come on. Huh? False wisdom. They think they're smarter than God. As a matter of fact, I'll just jump, I'll just, just jump back to the Garden of Eden. What started the whole fall? False knowledge. What is the emblem of Apple computers? The apple with a bite out of it. False knowledge. They know what they're doing. And they Position and posture from that principality. We will be smarter than God. And we'll give you knowledge you don't need to have. And when you buy the computer, you're looking at the bite in the apple every time you turn it on. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I just thought it was cute they, they used that as their logo. No, it was planned that they used that as their logo because that was the heart all along. Mm -hmm. To give you knowledge you don't have any business with. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, God doesn't prize ignorance. God absolutely prizes certain ignorance.
Paul said you should be naive like a little child to some things and wise as a serpent to others. There's some things you absolutely should make yourself not know. I don't need to have it. I don't need to know how to have sex in 13 different positions. Come on, folks, let's get real. I don't need to get on a computer and, and fact check on all the different ways to fight and cheat on my taxes and get away with it. I don't need to be able to get on the computer and fact check on all the best ways to get a divorce. There's all kinds of knowledge accessible now that is absolutely meant to corrupt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this boring? No. All right. Now let's look over here real quick. <clears throat> Let me make sure I covered everything. All right. Let's just, let's just deal with this, with this territorial spirit because this is wiping people out, always has been, and probably you're dealing with it right now and don't realize it. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you have heard me talk about uh, Brother Alan Pearson? I he was a senior pastor. I was his assistant pastor. Now, there's a story behind it that I've repented for for the last 30 years. It got started wrong, and I had to, had to repent of that. But he started a church. He came to me and asked me if I would be his assistant pastor. And I loved him at the church where we were at. And I said, sure. Uh, that's all we need to go there. But he started this. Remember I talked about the historical landmark church in Redlands, California? Beautiful. I should have brought the picture of my ordination in, in that church building. And Alan Pearson was a very highly anointed. Hopefully he won't track me down and sue me for using his name. But this brother was extremely anointed. And we'll get into that under this, these other areas of the demonic. Getting us to pursue things outside our calling and purpose. Amen. He was the most anointed man I've ever seen in my life for teenagers. Unbelievable anointing on his life. He could hold a meeting and 200 teenagers get set. I mean, just in, in the glory of God would, would fill up his, the rooms where he taught. Never saw anybody influence teenagers like him. But he decided to start a church. I decided to help him. We went, he, he, had, uh, he had, now listen closely. Listen closely. He had found out where this historical landmark church, very ran down but beautiful, was now on market, where it had never been on market before. And there were people bidding for it, and they don't tell you who the bidders are. Amen? Amen. So he put in a bid, he got all the paperwork done, and he got accepted, and he became the buyer. Alan R. Pearson became the buyer the, the ministry of the facility. Amen? Amen? So we just, we're going to go in and we're going to paint, we're going to renovate, we're going to have church, we're going to have a great ministry. And it was a very, very powerful, incredibly powerful church with the most incredible demonic manifestations I've ever seen in my life. So we're built, we're, we're not building a church, but we go in and, and we pull up all the floors and we're fixing the floors and had... 150-year-old wooden pews, just gorgeous. We're repainting everything. Now, when we walked in, this would give you a clue. Over the platform where the pulpit was, there wasn't a cross like that. There wasn't even, God forgive me, these weird designs. Uh, but there was a spaceship with Jesus stepping out of it as a mural over the pulpit. That should give you a moment of pause and realize that I have stepped into a territory that was once possessed by something other than God's will. Just because it's a church didn't mean zip. But both of us knew in the ministry didn't quite get the impact of that. We just thought it was a bunch of weirdos thinking Jesus came from a spaceship and the picture was bigger than both of those projection screens. Very well done. So naturally we stripped it down and painted over it and la la la. Well things started going wrong and things started happening and we're still building it and there's accidents and there's calamity and there's confusion and things aren't going right. And one day the Spirit of God, while I'm inside the church 
helping paint or scrape or something that we were doing, spoke to me and said, I want you to climb to the top of the inside of the bell tower. They had a five-story bell tower. It was three-story, one, two, and then uh, access to, to higher roof areas from there. So it was the, by the time you got to the top of the bell tower on the inside, of you're a good four or five story. So I'm climbing up this wooden ladder on the inside of the bell tower, which is, and it was a bell. It was an old 200 year old uh, wood, slap wood Victorian church. And I'm going all the way up and all the way up and all the way up and I get to the top and I'm looking around and then I look over here and inside that beam and inside that beam and inside that beam, pentagrams were scratched. So I said, this, ha, I'm sharp as a tech. This is of the devil. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm taking the four story step down, rebuking the devil all the way down. Thinking now this is wrong. I gotta go tell Alan, there's, there's more to this building that met the eye. Folks, I'm talking about we walked into a throne area. Into backyard dominion area. We walked into somebody's neighborhood. We walked into a region already well established. Come to find out who, were the, who was bidding on the other side that we didn't see. The group that lost the church. And the group that lost the church weren't just new age guru tree hugging weirdos. Which is what we fluffed them off to be. But this was some type of a principality area in a position of ruling over Redlands that we stumbled into very naive and unprepared. And all of a sudden, I mean, it just, I, I'm going, wow, this is not right. I tell, I tell Pastor Allen, he goes, well, that's kind of weird. And then he, he started where he couldn't sleep every single night for weeks. And I said, something's going on. And he started getting physical attacks on his body that he could not, listen to me, that he could not shake off. Because doctors couldn't do it. Figuring out what he ate wasn't doing it. Figuring out what's bothering him subconsciously wasn't doing it. There was somebody and other things working that we weren't identifying in this gross naivety. Mm -hmm. And his health started going down and down and down and down and down. And people in his church started getting divorced. And then he said, TC, come over here. I want to talk to you. We talked. He goes, man, this, this is just not right. I've never dealt with it. I said, I know. I said, we, there's... And, People would go into the church to go to their office and hear people running up and down the halls and nobody's there but them. How would you like to pastor a demon-possessed church? Folks, I'm not kidding you. So he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to dedicate a day of fasting and prayer. I said, all right. We went met in the, in the sanctuary, me and him and the wives and Mark Johnson, who was an associate pastor, and his wife, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. We prayed, listen to me, eight hours straight. Binding, loosing, casting out, all that. The very next week, Alan almost has a nervous breakdown. He's rushed to the emergency room with panic attacks and all this, and they gave him three or four bottles of, of pills and all this other stuff. We had entered into somebody's throne and all hell broke loose to get their territory back. How many of you have ever moved to a house and just something don't feel right here? You moved into somebody's territory. Now you can slough it off, go oh, all you want, but just hide and wait for the mayhem to start. Hallelujah. 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 So here we go. Nothing's getting better. We're fasting. We're praying. But listen, you can do all 
the lower level stuff right, but not knowing that you entered into a much higher level, this stuff's not going to work. Remember, before David ever slew Goliath, he had to deal with the lion and the bear. Those are the battles that prepared him for the higher level. I was never used to walking in to territory where a throne was set up already. I was just used to going here and dealing with little lower level infantry demons. We hit a stronghold. We hit a ruling spirit that had rule over the whole city and bless God all hell was coming against us. That's where I was driving. Now listen, folks, listen to me. You can, you can walk out of here, you can turn my videos off, you can say, TC's lost his mind, he's a liar. That's absolute nonsense. I'm telling you, it is the God's truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm driving one night to Desert Hot Springs Police Department, where I was still a police officer, being assistant pastor at Family Christian Fellowship in Redlands, California. I'm on my way to work, my first week of work. I'm going down Highway 10 into, the, if you know anything about California, it comes from the uh, uh, Cherry Valley area in, in, into the Palm Desert, Palm Springs area, and then you go up on the other side of the freeway to Desert Hot Springs. I'm going down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, and just like that, my whole car was seized. I'm doing 70. It lifts up turned sideways it was going to, I know what the devil did a, a principality seized my car oh that's not, listen folks Amen. if you don't think demons can move stuff mm -hmm. just hide, hang around for this series you're going to learn a lot Amen. Amen. if you don't think demons can manipulate nature, hang around why do you think Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves because right. it wasn't a normal storm there was principalities and powers stirring up the natural, tangible realm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 This spirits, or spirit it, grabbed my car, lifted it up at least 10 feet in the air. I was looking down. 75 miles an hour, I'm looking down, sideways, to the freeway. And instantly, a presence that this is all happening like in a split second of, a, of two seconds. And all I could get out was Jesus, because the steering wheel is free willing now. Jesus! And I felt something else stronger. Boom! Grab my car. Mm -hmm. Turn it back around and gently sit it down on the freeway. Ah! And I pull off. I'm in the fast lane. Pull off, pull over into the sand, get out, and promptly decide to throw up all over my shoes. How many of you know I wasn't ready for that level of warfare? Amen. This is what stirred up getting into this territory that we stumbled into. Now, I'm not saying that to, to, to panic you, because greater is he that is in me. Just the name of Jesus loosed that demon off my car and the angels of God took over and set me down without a scratch. Amen. But if anything would have come out of my mouth other than the name above all names, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be dead. Amen. It's in the time of battle and challenge you find out out of the uttermost parts of the heart the mouth speaketh. And if battle's not in you, defeat's waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Close that door, please. Amen. If battle is not already in you, defeat's waiting for you. Amen. I staggered back into the car, drove to work, and, and didn't tell anybody. I just said, well, I had a flat tire. I lied. I mean, who's going to believe? A demon grabbed my car and lifted me 10 feet off the freeway. They would say, we hired the wrong guy. Here, we got you scheduled for a psychological evaluation. A second one. Amen. I'm telling you, that happened. Exactly like I explained it to you. Reason number two that happened to me. I want more people to 
Jesus at that police. The police department was about 32 guys. I won three times that many people to the Lord. I was going into another territory known for sin and activity. All this, I'm just, and I'm just a baby Christian preacher. Just, just entering into the first stages of my ministry. How many of you know I got into some battles? I had to grow up real fast. And if there would have been any bless your darling heart in me, I would have died. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, now let's go back to the church. About three weeks after that, I'm in my office at church at night. We'd have Wednesday night service. Everybody had gone. I felt led to go up into my office on the second floor and pray and, and seek the Lord. And I'm up there praying. Right next to the church was a, a cute little one-bedroom uh, uh, cottage, which was also owned by the church. It was all built together. It was a church parsonage. And that's where Mark and Janelle lived. They didn't have any children. And uh, Pastor Allen had children. I had children. And, and so the only ones that could fit in that house and be comfortable were Mark and Janelle. And I'm up in my office. And behind my office, the sidewalk in the street was on one side. And, and as a matter of fact, the door in my office led to the, to the bell tower where the, they dedicated it to Satan. Most of you wouldn't even go in that room, let alone make it your office. And I'm sitting up there studying, praying in the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, I was on the floor on my knees praying, praying in the Holy Spirit and worshiping God. And I, and I hear yelling. Well, and, and I'm not trying to sound uh, ugly, but w the church wasn't in the best neighborhood. I thought it was just people in the neighborhood being people in the neighborhood. Was that polite enough? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So I, I ignored it, and I hear, I hear more intense yelling. And I ignored it. I thought maybe it was some gang members, you know, facing each other off. That was very common. I ignored it, kept praying in the Holy Ghost. And, I, but it, it, and then the, I, I heard, but it's all one voice. Well, this ain't right. So I get up. I go over to the window, which were these stained, beautiful 200-year-old stained glass windows. And I open it up. I look down. And here's Mark Johnson all by himself, surrounded by a coven of witches, all in black robes with human fat candles. They came back to take back their territory. He's surrounded by them. And he's, Jesus, rebuke you. I rebuke you. And he's just, just doing a 180 right in the face of these demon, demon possessed witches with one six foot warlock standing there with two candles, all chanting stuff in Latin at him. And I. I I can't believe I'm seeing this. So what, what happened? We went into his territory where he had dominion and the throne, and they got, because they couldn't keep up the, with the bills, they got kicked out, we moved in, and they weren't having none of that. Amen. If you think this stuff's not real, I'm telling you stuff that I lived through with my own eyes. Amen. The battle came to the church. In black robes with hoods and human fat candles, chanting demonic hexes over this man of God. Twelve of them surrounded him. So I, I jump up, I, I run down, I run down the hall, down the stairs, around the corner, and by the time I get out there, I'm running down the sidewalk, I'm going to have me some witch. <laughs> and I'm still a cop, I'm not too sure it all has been in tongues, it might have been in a little bit of knuckle. I'm going to knock me some hoods around. And as soon as, listen to this. Listen to this. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the power of agreement. Yes. As soon as I hit the sidewalk, said, Jesus! They looked up. They scattered. And Mark said, a little, little Mark about that big facing all of them off. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. I find you. He wasn't, run, he wasn't running nowhere. And they were standing their ground chanting as loud as back at him. But when two were there to agree, they had none of that. Amen. Amen. Come on. Once that happened, it all started reversing. Yes. Amen. Once he found out we weren't afraid of the battle, we would rush to the battle, and we would face him face to face, he was having none of that. He could only try to stir up in obscurity and in the shadows. 
And when they got brave enough to come and challenge us, by the grace of God, I felt led to stay behind and pray, having no idea what God was planning. And once they saw, there wasn't one pastor standing by himself, and they, we weren't afraid of them, they never showed up again. Not in that manifestation. So if you think I'm just playing when I say the battle's coming to the church, Amen. the battle's coming to you. Amen. And you better be ready and equipped and have a heart to fight. I, I don't know how to make it more obvious. This is real. I'm telling you with all my heart, these aren't fairy tales. You better get in the battle and have a heart to fight. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. What time do you have? About 4 o'clock? Can I have a couple more hours? <laughs> well, maybe not that much, Pastor. All right, can I have a few more minutes? Is that all right? Amen. Can, can you hang with me a couple more minutes? Amen. Are you learning something? Amen. Say it with me. Demons are territorial. Demons are territorial. By structure for their kingdom. By structure and so is God's kingdom. So is God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? But we are called to go into his territory and drive him out and establish God's kingdom. So if you're in any kind of a church environment, make it comfortable for you to hide from the battle. They're setting you up for failure between now and the rapture. That's right. Amen. I... I I don't know how to say that without sounding arrogant. I don't know how to say that and not be called prideful. I'm saying it to preserve your life and, and keep the kingdom of God strong. You're never called to hide and just survive. You're called to go and start trouble with the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. And not just stir him up, defeat him. Not, not just agitate him, drive him back. Not just drive him back, but possess what he thought was his. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that goes for the souls of men and territories. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that should give you a hint on how you should resist sickness in your body. Amen. If you understand you're, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're God's territory. Yes. Amen. He sits on the throne of your heart. Amen. And that's how you better start getting a concept of spiritual warfare for your health that was already purchased at the cross, is already kingdom yours, but it's going to be challenged Amen. constantly until you drive him out and he knows Jesus sits on your throne. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Look, at, look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, because they said he's casting out devils because he's the son of Beelzebub. He's doing it by the power of the devil. Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else how can one enter, listen, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? What, what kind of man are, is running this house? Strong. Strong. He is strong. But he's strong by deception. Amen? Amen. Amen. He is real good at trying to scare you through things you see, feel, and hear. That's why you walk by faith, not by sight. sight. Doesn't matter what he's in front of your face, he's still a defeated foe. Amen. Doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter what you're feeling in your body, he's still a defeated foe. It doesn't matter what he's been able to make your bank book balance at, he's still a defeated foe. Amen? Amen? Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Look at Pastor for just a second. Principalities and powers and demonic thrones are the strong man. We are called to go into his house 
with the intent of spoiling, taking away, stripping him of everything he thinks he owns. Primarily being over in Ezekiel where it says, and he would not let his prisoners go free. We go into his house and set captives free Amen. by preaching the gospel and choking out demon presence. Yes. Those are his goods until you show up. Yes. Amen. Well, I'm not serving the devil. If you're not for him, you're against him. Amen. Get this 2021 mentality of coexistence out of your deceived minds. All at one time, everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear the force of that? Or when you stagger around here and there a little bit, it doesn't have near the impact in the spirit realm as unity. Amen. You gotta agree with this, agree with the spirit, and speak the same way. There can be no hesitation in your stance for God. Amen? Amen. 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 Right now, we have entered into a strong man's house. This region, this tri-corner region of Farmers Branch, Addison, and Dallas. His prisoners are lost humanity. And we are coming into his territory with the express purpose of driving him out, setting the captives free, and adding to God's house. Amen. 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 Now he's a strong man. And he lives there. But you can enter in when you decide to. Amen. Doesn't matter how he locks bars, blocks the windows and doors, you have the power to go in. But you only have the power to go in when you understand why you have the power for lost humanity yes. and building the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? All right. Except he first bind the strong man. If you're going to get anything of the kingdom of God established in your life, you've got to first enter in Satan's territory that is ruling wherever you're at, and second, bind him to where he can no longer move. Amen. If you don't, he won't, he keeps moving, and the manifestation of the covenant promises of God in your life and ministry are always hindered wherever God sends you. If you don't deal with the devil, you'll never walk fully in the kingdom. Amen. You don't really think he just backs up and says, okay, go ahead and be prosperous. Go ahead and have a happy home. Go ahead and build your church here. I mean, after all, you showed up, that means I'm defeated. No, 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 no. They're territorial. They fight to defend where they already existed. And they fight for their life. Amen. They don't hit it a lick. Amen. And they get tired and say, okay, we'll let him build the church. <laughs> That's how Christians pray. I guess it wasn't God's will. Because I prayed three times wow. and nothing happened. You pray until you start seeing prisoners set free. Exactly. Once you see pre people getting set free, born again, healed, delivered then you know the throne's being moved. Amen. Any church without the supernatural is a church that's totally superficial. Amen. Any church that you go to and they're not casting out devils and they're not speaking in tongues and they're not laying hands on the sick, then it's just Amen. dead religion superficially going through religious activity. Because nothing else challenges Dominion and territory. Amen. Amen. Until you get supernatural in your Christianity, you'll stay superficial and the kingdom of God will never manifest with the covenant blessings in your life anywhere near what the promise of God has. And you'll sit around saying, why God? How come you do it for him and not for me? And accuse God the rest of your life. Amen. Right. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what do you do with this strong man? Is he a strong man? Yeah. Is that supposed to stop you? No. No, no that, should, that should say you're on target. That's the direction you run. Well, it's getting harder. Get harder. Amen. All hell's breaking loose. Pray harder. Amen. 
Nothing seems to be working. Ah! That's, that's evidence it's working. I did that and this popped up. Yep. You got him on the run. Amen. Amen. He's sending reinforcements because it's working. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know the major religion that fights Christianity? Anybody got the Holy Ghost gumption to say it out loud or are you afraid of retribution? Say Islam. 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 They don't want to coexist with you. They want to cut your head off. No, I mean, I mean, all of them. Here comes the cry of the tree hugger. <laughs> I don't trust none of them. Oh, Pastor, you can't say. Well, yes, I can. When their doctrine says, befriend the heathen, win him, the, the infidel, win him over, make him think he's your friend so you can cut his throat later. That's in their teaching. Yes, it is. So how do you know when they're just being nice people or they're just being nice people long enough to set you up and cut your throat? So that ought to tell you, you better walk in the spirit. Amen. What is their doctrine? You can lie to them. Huh? You can lie to them. Yeah, that's in their teaching. You can lie to them, say anything you want. You can drink with them as long as you're drinking to deceive him. Yeah. You can go to clubs with him as long as you're clubbing to deceive him. You can sleep with his girlfriends as long as you're sleeping to deceive him. Anything's legal as long as you're deceiving the infidel to cut his throat later. Did you know that? That's absolute fact. That's not something I'm making up. Check it out. Find out if the pastor knows what he's talking about. That's correct. What's their doctrine? Anywhere where there's a Christian church, turn it into a mosque. And any mosque that the Christians have entered into, they must be driven out at the cost of every life it takes. They consider... The Temple Mount, holy. That's why they're constantly fighting Israel. Because Islam was once there, they're commanded to fight until the last man to get it out of the hands of the infidel. That tells you exactly the same thing. We come into this church that was once possessed by them, and they released everything they had to get it back out of the hands of the Christians. The spirit is exactly the same. What's that mean? Once you enter into this mature Christian walk of actually being used of God, the battle never stops. Forget it. Amen. If you let this sink into your heart, when is this ever going to stop? You're just waiting to be defeated. Because <laughs> he'll never stop until he can get everything back from you that you took from him. I can prove that scripturally. Are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you learning anything? Amen. Now the good news is you'll win every battle. But you've got to learn to love a fight. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pastor Tony's. That's not preaching I like to hear. I'm mean, getting to this God. fight and this stuff here. God. We'll talk about kissing and hugging and love you later. Let's fight first. And if you can't learn to fight first, you won't have the luxury to sit around and hug and kiss and be sweet. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Now, we ended up having a great church there. People getting saved by the dozens, manifestations of the Holy Ghost, casting out devils on a regular basis. It was a beautiful place. But it came with all hell facing us in battle, daily and nightly, in the living room, in our lives, in our jobs, everywhere. Until they finally showed up at our door and said, all right, Let's see if you're going to keep it or we're going to keep it. Amen. We kept it. Amen. We kept it. Amen. He kept it. Amen. 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 Say it with me. No weapon, no weapon formed against me against will, prosper. will prosper. No means none. No means none. Nada. 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 Zip. Zip. Zero. Zero. Even on a bad day. Even I'll give him praise for that. I didn't say nothing in Vietnamese. Zero. Hut. Hut. 
that, that, that sounds just like nada. Ha! You get ha out of me, devil. You get nothing back. Ha! You know, that's what cracks me up about people who say, well, you got to say Yeshua HaMashiach. I'll tell you, the devil understands Jesus in any language. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You don't have to learn Greek to cast him out. You don't Amen. have to learn Hebrew to cast him out. You don't Amen. have to speak in Aramaic to pass him out, cast him out. Trust me, Jesus, he knows. That's right. Amen. Amen. In every language, he knows. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not cast out by your, you don't cast him out by your, your, your linguistic intellect. You cast him out by your relationship with the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, that's good stuff. Thank yes. you, Holy Ghost. All right, look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, look at verse 21. When a strong man, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Right? So you got a strong man in his palace sitting on his throne. What's his attitude? He's content. He's happy. Why? Because nobody's challenging him. Amen. Say it with me. He doesn't mind if you have church. He doesn't mind if you have church. Just mind your own business with your church. Mind your own business. I submit to you that's exactly where the church corporate is at. We're not bothering you. Why, why come pick on us? Amen. Yes. He want, he's at perfect peace with you having your happy little hymns, minding your own business, going through your mundane little life. Just don't challenge him. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, I love this stuff. Amen. He's, he's at peace. His, peace his, his goods are in peace. Watch. But... I like that. I'm the but he's talking about right here. Amen. Amen. I'm that but. Yes. Be at peace all you want, Satan. Set up your throne anywhere you want. But there's somebody coming. Amen. Amen. There's somebody coming. And your peace is about to leave. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But when the, watch this. When, when the, when a stronger than he, that's me. Praise God. He may be a strong man, but sit with me. But I am stronger in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm stronger in Christ Jesus. That was pathetic. You're going to get your butt kicked. <laughs> but I am stronger in Christ Jesus. But I am stronger. Yeah, he's a strong man. But when one's stronger, say me. 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 But when one stronger come upon him and overcome him, that tells you right there, you're stronger and you can overcome him. Amen. Well, folks, have you ever really read this stuff? Yes. Amen. Yeah, he's a strong man, but I'm stronger Amen. in Christ Jesus, and we overcome him. Amen. You should never run from a fight. You should never hide and watch. You are called to be victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. I'm not the weaker one. I am the stronger one in Christ Jesus. I'm the stronger man in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overcome him and take from him all his armor. Now that's where we're getting in this teaching. His armor is deception, seduction, lying, and bribing. Manifestations of these evil demons are his, are his armor. Because he's already been stripped in reality. So he gives you an illusion of power by deception, lust, and playing other games with you. Amen. 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 In his armor wherein he trusts and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me. Watch this. Well, how, how come he started teaching that all of a sudden? I'm glad you asked. Are you ready for some revelation? Yes. yes. Watch this. What's he talking about? The strong man and a stronger one coming in and thumping his nose and taking his stuff. But he that is not with me 
is against me. So who's the stronger man? Jesus. Jesus. Who's in Christ? We are. Who goes in with Jesus and takes Satan's stuff? We do. But if I'm not for Jesus, I'm strengthening the strong man. Watch this. He take away all his armor wherein he trusteth and divideth his spoil. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scatters. Scatters what? Satan's tools, Satan's prizes, Satan's wealth, and Satan's prisoners. And if you're not doing it with Jesus, you're helping Satan keep it and scatter him to other areas. That ought to tell you right there, you absolutely must be a soul winner and about Jesus' business or you're fighting him with this comfortable, empty little Christianity. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When the unclean spirit watch, let's talk about the strong man. It hasn't changed the subject yet. Either you're with me fighting this strong man and getting the prisoners out of his hands or you're scattering victims all over the world and fighting against me if you're not fighting with me. Amen. Well, my religion's a personal thing. You demon-possessed faith. Amen. 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 You can't say that. Jesus just said that. If you're not with him, you're on the other guy's side. That's right. Doesn't matter what building you sit in on Sundays. Amen. Amen. How many of you know there's some demons in churches right now nervous? You can't say that they haven't said something like that out loud in 25 years. That's why you're dead. That's why your preacher looks like a six-foot icicle. And your service is as dead as the chicken you're going to eat later. And the messages are as weak as the tea you're going to drink later. And your preacher is as cold as the ice cream you're going to eat later. That baby's leaping in her wounds because he's going, Amen, brother, that's fine. There's some anointing on that. Amen. Let me get in the battle. Amen. 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 When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, what? He walketh through what? Dry places, not hell. Dry places. You don't cast them into hell where they came from. You cast them back into dry places where they came from. Amen. That's where Jesus sent them. Amen. Seeking rest and finds none. Where was he at peace at? In, you. In that person sitting on the throne of his own heart. Yes. Amen. Why do you think you get upset when you share Jesus publicly? Because right. Jesus isn't sitting on that throne. And the demons get, they lose their peace. He said, I will return unto what? The house. No, no. What's it say in your translation? House. I will return to the house I left. No, the bad translation. To my house. My house. He claims it as his territory. Amen. Now you're seeing the territorial mentality come up. No, 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 no. That's mine. I live there first. I rule there first. That's my territory. My house, my throne. And I'm going to go back to it. You cast them out, they're commanded by hell to always try to get it back. Well, I got delivered from that sickness, and then all of a sudden it comes back. Well, I was delivered from cancer. I was in remission, and then it comes back. I got victory over that demon that was harassing my sleep, but now it's back. How many times as pastor have I told people, all right, you're healed now, spend eight hours a day listening to Kenneth Hagin for faith, Kenneth Copeland for authority and dominion, Norval Hayes for dealing with spirits? How many of you know none of them do it? Because we're smarter, I'm free, and now I'm going to go play because I was too sick to play before. And guess what? He always comes back. 
And how's he come back? Seven times worse. You are delivered and you're set free and you're healed. You better dive in to an understanding of the Jesus that did the work so you can keep the work. Because when he does come back, if you haven't strengthened while he was back, have more authority and dominion while he was gone, he's coming back seven times worse. That's a scriptural principle that cannot be violated. And you better be seven times increased to deal with it. Amen. 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 He'll heal you where you're at, but he doesn't expect you to just party and have a good time now that you're healed. Amen. He expects you to garnish yourself and fill up this house with a, him sitting on the throne and you filled up with the things of God constantly. Because he's constantly now looking for others to help him come back on that throne. I've fell victim to that. I had panic attacks 20, 30 times a day for 365 days straight. God spoke to me in the shower. I said, there's the light. Revelations come. Satan, you are defeated. Instantly left. Never had another one. Five years later, I bent over, picked something up. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, no, you don't, devil. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You're not playing this game with me. I'm not answering your call. Get out in Jesus' name. I haven't had another one in 15 years. But I was seven times stronger than the seven times coming to try to get back when they had started. You won't lose your healing if you're listening. You won't come out of what they call remission if you're listening. You won't lose your blessing of deliverance if you're listening. Well, you're negative. No, I'm telling you the Bible. He's going to come back, and it's going to be seven times greater attack. You better be ready. You better be much more the fanatical believer than you were when Jesus came in with his grace and mercy and delivered you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, folks, I'm not trying to offend anybody. Are you, are you understanding? There's dear people I love desperately falling victim to this. Amen. I, I, I have had the chance to fall victim to this, and thankfully I was taught when deliverance and relief comes, you better dive into a revelation of what brought the relief and strengthen yourself in it, because I was taught this a long time ago. Not only do I not want to come back, I how many of you know people that quit smoking and they go back to smoking and it's ten times harder to quit? Why? Because there's ten, there's seven times minimum more demons. Amen. When the unclean spirit's gone out, he walks around dry places seeking some rest and he finds none. His rest is where he used to live. He saith unto himself, I will return to my house. He claims it is his territory. From whence I came out. But he's still looking at his, where he belongs. Amen. Is this helping you understand demons? Amen. Your spiritual battle, why things keep seeming like a cycle in your life? Darlene said, that's super duper. <laughs> Are you ready? And when he cometh, look at Pastor. I'm reading you the word, aren't I, Brother T? I'm not interpreting this, am I? He promises you he's coming back. Well, I thought I was healed of that. I guess I really wasn't. Not only were you really healed of that, but now you've thrown the doors clear open to the devil, speaking foolishness, saying, I guess I really wasn't. The door's unlocked. Amen. And you've given him absolute legal authority to come in seven times worse. With your mouth. Amen. Amen. Is this helping anybody? Amen. Is this explaining Amen. some cyclical demonic activity in your lives? Amen. You get over it, and here it goes again. You get, over, you get through it, here it goes again. And it seems to just constantly get a little bit worse each time. Amen. When you get over it, get on your knees and get seven times stronger. Amen. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Amen. 
When he cometh, he finds it swept and garnished. Means, yeah, Jesus came in, but not filled up. Well, I'm saved, but what is your life filled up with? You're saved to be filled up with Christ till he sits on the throne. He calls the shots, and you are soaked with Jesus from finger to finger, toe to toe, head to toe. Every bit of you is filled up with Jesus and the Spirit. And if it's not, then guess who's got room to come back in? Amen. That's a Bible fact. I'm not making up theology. Then he goeth, then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, say devils, devils. more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and what? And the last state of that man is worse than the first, as you're turning to Luke chapter 4. So that tells me something right there. If you don't understand demons, devils, and spiritual warfare, you can get saved and your life actually get worse. Amen. I've had them come into every church I've pastored. Pastor, I gave my heart to God and joined this church and, and all hell broke loose. I've never had my life so miserable as it is now. Well, sit down and start listening and learning and not only will it clear it up, you can drive him out and you can live free from that. But not as a marginal, mo moderate Christian. Only as a Jesus filled up, Holy Ghost baptized, tongue talking, blood bought, power filled, fanatical soldier for Christ. Amen. Nothing else will work. Amen. Well, you're just overboard with that. Yeah. And it's causing me to be a survivor and overcomer. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Let me find this real quick. Where were we? Luke chapter 11? Four. No. Four. Luke 11 what? 22. 21. Let's see if I can find it real quick. The, you know how the uh, living Bible and stuff, they're not numbered out like the King James, so it's harder. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Huh? Luke chapter 11. I'm sure it's in here real quick. Let me find out. Yeah. Listen. Listen to it in the message. Are you ready? Now this is just an interpretation, not a translation. But I love the way it sounds. When a corrupting spirit is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis. Some, listen. Some unsuspecting soul that he can be devil. Who's he looking for? Somebody who don't know zip about anything to do with warfare, demons, devils, and the origin of evil. Just a happy little Christian minding his happy, slappy business. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and what's he want to do? Bedevil him. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't find anyone, he says, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll go back to my old haunt. On return, he finds that person swept and dusted, he's saved, but vacant, a shallow, empty Christian. Pastor, right. you should be so proud of that. It, it's just reinforcing what I've been teaching for years. Amen. Amen. So every, every, now and then, you know, Pastor Allen, he's, so, he's an extremely spiritual young man, and we were talking the other day, and he says, you want to know something? I am completely, totally unimpressed with anybody who says, I'm a Christian. Amen. Big freaking deal nowadays. Amen. Amen. Come on. It just doesn't impress him at all. Amen. It's just like this guy here. Amen. He says, I want to see the walk, the talk, the Amen. power, the authority, the dominion. Amen. I'm totally uninterested with it. I'm saved. Amen. Well, you want to know something? So am I, and I have been for years. On return, he finds it swept and dusted, but vacant. It then runs out and around and rounds up seven other spirits dirtier mm -hmm. than itself. They all move in, whooping it up, 
that person's end it ends up far worse than if he had never cleaned up in the first place. Amen. Luke chapter 4, are you ready? Yeah. Amen. I'm just going to stay right here in the amplified. It's the account of Jesus being tempted by the devil. All the temptations are clear. Who's got a King James? It's going to be basically uh, verse 13. Would you read it, Pastor Darrell? No, let, let our sweet sister read it. Go ahead. You've got you to be Pentecostal so they can hear it in right. Uganda, East Africa. I got it. You said verse 13, right? Yes. And when the devil had ended all these things. That's not anywhere near loud enough. Dear God, <laughs> Jesus. I wouldn't even wake up a demon, let alone drive him out. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. Hello. I told you I can prove it scripturally. Now, if he only left Jesus for a season, do you think he's never going to come back for you? No. Well, that's negative. I'm trying to help you. You can be absolutely 100% healed. You better grow into it to keep it. Amen. You can be 100% delivered. You better grow into it to possess it and keep it. He's coming back. He's only leaving for a season. And if he's got enough Holy Ghost, unholy ghost gumption to try Jesus again, what do you think he's going to be with your life? Like a roaring lion seeking. Is there a window open? Has he opened the door? Has he dropped his guard? Is he playing instead of studying? Is he watching TV instead of praying? Oh, he's, he's, he's already gone back into marginal Christianity. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Listen to it in the, in the message. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily. Lying in wait for another opportunity. Amen. I'm glad you're delivered. Are you going to stay delivered? Amen. Most people, probably not. And then right behind that, they'll start writing their life's doctrine on why God doesn't heal everybody. Why somebody get it and some people don't. How God took it away. How God doesn't heal anymore. And all that garbage because they don't know what the word says and how to live with the demonic all around them. Amen. He retreats for a little while and lies in wait, waiting for another opportunity. That's the mentality of territorial spirits, how they respond. They're dedicated to coming back and getting back everything plus more what they originally lost. Amen. You Amen. have the ability in Christ. You are more than able in Christ. And you better have the re resolute Holy Ghost gumption to not only know you're not coming back, you're never coming back, and I'm going to be stronger and harder on you every time you even think of showing your stinking face on the horizon of my life. Amen. And to teach you to stay away from me, I'm going to go out and cast some more devils out of my neighbor. Amen. Well, that doesn't sound like anything going on in Christianity today. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. But it's Bible. Amen. One, demons are what? Territorial. Territorial. Two, you better know what you're walking into. Yeah. Where, where's the house you bought? Where do you live? Has things changed when you moved in? This stuff start happening. You better get busy. Amen. Two or three? There's a dumb devil, I can't count. Three? They are strong, We're strong. in your ignorance Amen. and in their deception. But a stronger than him lives in you and commands you to go in and take from him. They're territorial. What? They're strong. 
Number three, you're stronger all the time, every time. Number four, you have the power to take from him what he thought he would have forever. That means there is no hopeless case. Number five, you never settle with your victory. You grow and increase in the Lord in the area of that specific battle and you increase in your knowledge of God and the knowledge of the authority that got you there in the first place or you're ultimately going to lose it again because they are compelled to take back what they lose. They're commissioned to take back what they lose. They'll never rest till they try desperately to take back what they lost. Even into other generations. Amen. Oh. Well, Grandma died of cancer in that house. Then she gave it to Mama. Mama died of cancer in that house. Then, and I didn't hear, now my kids got cancer. How many of you could, ding, 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 you're in a territory. Amen. It didn't move out. It's just taking everybody out that moves in. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, that sounds very little compassion. It's absolute compassion. I don't want to stroke your head, Chuck, and say, God, bless your heart, and go home and watch your life just get destroyed systematically by plans of hell that I'm never going to give you the wisdom to fight with. Amen. 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 I'd rather ruffle you a little bit, but get some Holy Ghost Amen. gumption in your crawl to where you start doing some battle to your own salvation. Amen. And then be able to do it for your neighbors and your loved ones. Amen. 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 They're territorial. The fight never ends. And you're commissioned to go and grow at the same time. Amen. You can't go and grow up later. You go and grow as you're going. Did you hear me? Yes. And the second you say, well, I've grown enough, that's when you can just, just count it. That's, you'll start seeing them marching over the horizon back toward your house. Amen. Did you learn something today? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Pastor Tony Agee, associate pastor in our church. Come over here, brother. I'll, I'll, I'll okay, he's going to reveal some stuff that he doesn't want to be identified as.